All right, so this is today's post. What I'm going to walk through is the grid drawing. This is just an option. If you prefer to just do it by proportions, you can do it that way, that's perfectly fine. Um, but for the grid drawing, first you do need the picture that you want to use on your computer. So you guys can just follow along here. And then if you wanna do it on your own, you can follow the video on this link and this, and then um, by tonight, I'll have my demo posted if it works out. Um, but once you have your picture on your computer, you can put a digital grid over it. Um, I suggest if you want to do it before you send it to your computer to turn it black and white, because we'll be doing that later anyways, you can do that first. But if not, you can always do that later. So I'm going to go to start. Now this page here is where you set the orientation. So is it a portrait long ways picture or is it horizontal wide ways? If your picture is square, then you need to just look at the person in it and are they appearing more long ways or are they more wide ways and you want their shoulders to show. So it's up to you which way you want it to go. Um, the kind of stock image I'm using is going to be a portrait and you want to keep it at eight by 10. Here's where you choose your photo. I believe I downloaded just a stock image and I'm going to hit upload. If by chance it says your image is too large, email it to me, I'll resize it and I'll email it back to you and then you should be able to upload it. If it says file type not usable, it's usually because it's a ping, which means it was a screenshot. So it needs to be a J JPEG. Um, there's ways online you can turn a ping into a JPEG and you can look that up. Otherwise you can email it to me and just explain and I'll try to help. But then you just go to next. And this page is just if it uploaded sideways for some reason, then you can rotate it if you need to. And this next step is so that you can crop it. Now this is so that when you put the little box around it, it constrains it to that eight by 10 ratio so that you can easily make it squares instead of um, having to stretch them or having extra space. And you can also crop in closer. So this is just a stock image I picked, but I'm going to just draw it in so that it's cropped a little closer, mostly just on her face. And then I'm going to go up and click crop photo. If you don't clip that, click that, it will not crop it. So make sure you do go back up and do that. If you don't like how it looks when it's cropped, because it does show you, you can hit reset and try it again and kind of do it however you want. And I'll go to next. Now this part is where you can kind of decide. Um, this determines how wide your squares are. It also determines how many lines you're having to draw. So if you don't want to draw as many lines, choose two inch. Um, if you have, if you don't really care about driving, drawing too many lines, you can do one inch. Um, the thickness is just how bold those lines on your picture will look. If you feel like you want to be able to see them a little bit better, the thickest I would go is two. Um, I wouldn't go to three or four because then it might start um, blocking out some parts of your picture that you need to see. And um, I would personally suggest choosing a color other than black because when you have a black and white picture or a picture that has areas that are black, those black lines can blend in and you won't be able to see them. So I usually choose like blue or green, maybe even red, just something that I can see um, over the colors of the picture and I guess hit choose so that you make sure you choose it. Um, again, you can pick two inches if you want to. I'm going to keep it at one. At one, you also have more precision so that if there's an area with a lot of detail and your boxes are two inches apart, you can't really whittle down as easily where to place things. So if you keep it at one, it makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm going to hit download and then you get your picture. So see, I used blue lines so that I could see it over the picture well. If this picture was in black and white, um, her roots here would probably be pretty dark and some of those lines might blend in, which is why I chose a colored line. Now, one thing I would suggest, I'm not sure if you can do it on your Chromebook. Um, you'll have to let me know. And actually, I think I need to show you the picture. I'll just show the whole screen. There we go. Um, You'll have to let me know if you're able to draw on the pictures with your Chromebook, because I have no way of really knowing that. But if you needed to add numbers, and I do suggest doing so, um, you can write on here. I don't think mine lets me with my MacBook, but 
I can use text or if it lets you add text, you can do that too. And then you can, I'm not gonna let me type. Or can I write? I can, okay. You can write in the numbers if you'd like to. Now in past years, I usually started with zero because the app I was using used zero as the first number, but I'm just putting in, and they look kind of goofy, but um, just a number for each box, just one through whatever that box is. And hopefully if you can write on yours, you can make yours look a little bit prettier than mine. I may have to use shapes. And then I would just do one through 10 going this way. Let me try it this, this one. Oh, that works better. It doesn't really matter if the, if the numbers are pretty or not. Um, Cause you're just writing it for your reference that you know which box that is. Eight, nine and 10, okay. And then save that so that um, you have it saved with the numbers. So again, you can either, I think on Chromebooks you can write, if you can't, let me know after I'm done going over this and maybe we can figure it out or I can put the numbers over it for you, whatever works. But you need this done first before you move on to your paper. So now I'm going to switch to my paper. Actually, maybe I will pull up both screens so that we can see both. So I've got this and I've got my paper. All right, so I need to make this an eight by 10 grid as well. If you have nine by 12 paper, I will say the video I posted, um, on this post, it makes you make like this border around the edge. You don't have to do that. You can just start at the edge and you'll have some extra space along the edges of your paper, but you don't have to do those borders unless you want to and you think it looks nice, then feel free to follow this video on the post fully if you'd like to, I have no problem with that. Um, but what I'm going to do, my paper is eight by 10. If yours is nine by 12, or if you're using computer paper, um, all that will happen is when you get to the last box, the 10, you'll just have an extra half an inch, which isn't a big deal. So if that happens, just leave it. Sometimes people draw a little squiggly line through it so that they know that nothing goes there, but you'll just have a little strip at the bottom and the right side. That's a little bit extra, but you don't need to worry about it. Um, so I'm going to walk through drawing the grid on your paper. You'll need a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, but you have a phone. Um, there are some ruler apps on the phones and they work quite well where you just like lay it down and you'll see you, it's usually one through three or one through four on your phone and you'll mark at each inch. Then you'll just move your phone and you'll mark at each inch. Um, but our goal is just make an eight by 10 grid on whatever size paper you have. If you're working on smaller paper, like four by five, that's still in the ratio of eight by 10. In that case on your paper, you would do half inch marks, not full inch. But in most cases, sketchbooks aren't really other sizes. So my guess is those are the two sizes you might have. So this is my paper and I'm going to mark at every inch. Mark pretty lightly. I'm only going to mark a little bit darker so that you can see it okay. So you're just marking at every inch. If you decided you wanted to do every two inch instead of every one inch, you would just mark the even numbers. I usually go down and I do a second row so that I can connect the little dashes. It just helps you keep your ruler a bit straighter when you're making your lines. Now I'm going to rotate my paper and I'm going to connect those dashes. Now this is the most important part um, you want to make sure that you're not drawing these lines dark. So what I usually say is don't draw them like you're writing. So don't push. Just hold your pencil loosely and just glide it across those dashes. Let me move this over a little bit. There we go. And then you'll do that for each one. Just glide it.
I'm using my B for this. Um, you can use the 2H if you got the pencils from school or if you just have a regular writing pencil, that should be fine as long as you're just gliding it. So make sure you're not pressing really hard. Make sure you're not using pen. You need to use pencil for this part. And if it makes little like squigglies, don't worry about it because we're going to be covering most of it anyways. And last one going this way. And then keeping your, pen, your paper in this orientation, now we're going to make the notches for the other direction. Now, I usually don't line them up on a line. I just do it like in a space between them. Um, line up the edge of your ruler or the first line of it with the edge of the paper. If you're in a sketchbook, it's usually the binding line. And again, mark it at each inch. Now for this one, you can also go down and make another line of dashes. Since the paper is shorter, sometimes you don't need to do that. It's easier to visualize it when you're covering a shorter space, but I still like to do two lines of dashes to line up. And then glide the pencil. Again, glide it. And you can see that these squares are smaller. So if you're looking at this and you're like, that's way too many squares, that's too much to keep track of. Just do a two inch grid instead. It should still work okay. You just won't be able to get quite as precise with your placement of lines that way. But this should work okay for most people, or that should. And last one. Okay, and then I've got my eight by 10 grid. Now I'm going to number it. Now I chose to number it starting with a one. If you write your numbers, make sure you write them lightly because for some people you might have part of your picture up here. Mine doesn't, um, but you don't want numbers kind of interrupting your picture. You also don't want numbers um, like permanently showing in the white area. So write them lightly if you can. Again, I just wrote a little bit darker so that you could see it. But that is doing a um, eight by 10 grid on paper. Again, you could have chosen to do two inches if you wanted to, and then it would be a four by five grid, just larger squares. But that is this and then your picture. And what you do from here, is you look at your picture and you just line up where things are. Usually I like to start with the face shape and then I do the hair and then I place the features. You can do it in whatever order you want. Some people like to start with the outline of the hair and then they do the face and the features and people do the face features and the hair. Doesn't matter. Whatever place you think is a good starting place is up to you. But looking at your picture, you want to look at whatever you're starting at and line it up. So if I want to start at her chin here, I want to pay attention to the fact that the middle of her chin and pretty much the middle of her face, which is nice and convenient, um, lines up in the eight section of the grid and the line between the four and the five. So it is right about here is where her chin starts. And then I'm looking at in each square where it is placed within that square. So it comes up, cuts across in the corner here, in the six box, it actually cuts in a little sooner. Then her hair kind of shadows over. So I'm just going to kind of follow the contour of her face for now, and then I'll kind of delineate that that's hair in a second or after I do the face. And the three box up here is where her face starts turning. It's actually like right at the corner there. And we've got her hairline. And it cuts down at the line between the three and the four. And the first go, you're just kind of trying to quickly place it in there while also pay attention, 
paying attention to your boxes. And then after that, you can always go in and make sure everything is how it should be. Six. Cuts the corner here. And then meets back up with the other side of her chin. So I've got her face shape in here. I can always go in and fix things, but that is her face shape. What I like to do next is either the hair or the face feature placement, not necessarily the details of the features yet, but at least where they are. Um, in the five here, in the five here is where her eye starts. So I'm not going to detail it yet. I'm just drawing in the general area her eye is. Same with over here. Actually, that was sat a little bit higher. And then here too, just placing them. Obviously, that's not the exact shape. And then in the seven box, just at the top here is where her nose starts. And then also in the seven box is where her mouth starts. So if you see a pattern here, I'm still kind of starting it similarly to when we did the proportion lines except I started with the grid so that when it comes to going in and doing those details, I can do them with more precision. So then I could go back and I could really look at the shape of her eyes and make sure I get it correct. And then I just continue on from there, detailing the features, putting in the hair, putting in the shoulders, paying attention to where things are placed within each box. So hopefully that helps kind of clarify how to use a grid. That's one option you have. The other option is using the proportion guides and working that way. Um, I'll do that in class though. So I'm gonna end the recording since this was kind of its own thing.